Hello everyone, welcome back to Back to UK TV. It's episode 97 in our new twice a week format. You've had the game review, now it's time for the game preview. Uh, it's the home opener, we're back to the Ray J. The Bears are coming into town to continue the black and blue old division rivalry. Um, what do you think we're going to see in this game, Mariana? What should we be looking out for? Well, um, I think we 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 all know that the Bears' biggest threat is probably Justin Fields. He's uh, he's got a pair of legs on him, so it will be very important to to keep contain on him and and not let him get you know get running. Um, we we looked at, at some of the stats and and we know that he was the the leading rusher um, in their in their first game. So it's likely that he's going to get a lot of yards for them this season. So we just that's that's probably the key focus is let's contain Justin Fields and not let him run all over the place. That's it. So you mentioned the Bayern. So they, the Bears had him throw thirty seven passes. Uh, against the Packers. Now, obviously, the, the game situation and the score probably dictated that to a large extent. 24 completions, 216 yards. So, you know, he, I think he was moving the ball, but let's say it was 59 yards on the ground at nearly seven yards a carry. That was probably the killer because in my head, seven yards a carry, that's that's a third and long that gets converted. That's that's the that's yeah, that keeps the drive alive, isn't it? Uh, and that's probably where he's he's most dangerous. It feels like they did enough. For, don't forget, although these bear, these Bears, you know, lost, they scored 20 points. Um, when there's another team we know that also scored 20 <laughs> points. So, uh, yeah, you can't you can't assume these things. So, David, if we take Justin Fields, um, if we can take him out of the game, what's the best way to do that, do you think? I think it's JTS getting to him early, using yep. his pace. Yep. And then it's all down to uh, Devin Wright, I think. Okay, I'm picking him up if he does break in the backfield and use. So that's sort of like um, the things we used to do with sort of Donovan McNabb and people like that, and just try and shadow someone. Yeah, I think so. I think you know he's definitely their main threat. We've just got to try and contain him and uh, not let him break anything. He, he did. He did spread the ball around. So again, looking through the stats, there were three receivers that each had seven targets: yeah, Mooney, Komet, and Johnson. So. Um, you know, it does feel like they've probably got a reasonable set of receivers. Again, you know, I, I, for me, I'm kind of old school. I reckon I looked down the roster and I said, oh, DJ Moore, I remember him. But, you know, <laughs> the, the, world, the world's moved on a little bit since then. I accept it. Um, Marianne, in terms of offensive weapons, uh, you know, Khalil Herbert, Deonta Foreman, that, it's, it's, this is not your Pro Bowl roster, but, again, they racked up 20 points. Yeah, they, they've got an interesting, as, as you pointed out, DJ Moore, he, he's the one that I would have, picked out as as sort of the the wide receiver threat. He didn't seem to to get as many catches this week as I'd expect. Cole Komet has been a solid tight end for a good few years as well. And and uh, for me, uh, the interesting one is their running back Roshan Johnson. Yeah. Um he's I think he's a rookie this year. So it'll be interesting to see if he ends up taking over a little bit like we were discussing, you know, with with the in in our previous uh, podcast. With, with Tucker at the yeah. back. As, as I say, he had seven targets, six catches, and he had five carries for 20 yards, which is only four yards, but hey, don't knock it. That's pretty much more than the Bucks' offense put on the ground. <laughs> but on their depth chart, Johnson's third on the depth chart. So like you say, I think there's probably an element of rookie respect, but he, he could well be playing himself into position. Yeah, very much so. I think, you know, they it, it takes a while for, uh, you know, the, as you say, a team to come together. Personally, I think that the game's a, a winnable game for us. Um, I, you know, I, I don't... We, we're normally good against the run. We've got Vaya, We've got... Um, he's, he's a solid run stopper. He has been for, for a good few years now. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can, can stop that run. I think, for me, it, it's still the real threat will be Justin Fields and containing him. And, and I... This will be one of those key games for for your favourite JTS, um, for for him, actually maybe uh, rack, ratcheting it down a gear, mm. and instead of going full blast and running past Justin Fields and it turning into Justin Fields then breaks contain, for him to get through that D line, but then not just run past, but just to, break down a bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's obviously, David, you said that we, you know, we could try and spy Justin Fields. The other option is just to try and collapse the pocket. Don't necessarily go for the big sack or the big strip sack, but just keep containing that pocket. Make sure any running back comes through, gets tackled for two, three yards, uh, and then that challenge him to beat you through the air, I guess, is, is probably the result of that. Uh, it looks like he's got the, the receivers, but he was only throwing 216 yards in the game that the team are chasing. Then that that might imply that maybe he maybe hasn't got enough there. Uh, be interesting to see. Kind of which which player we talked about JTS talked about Devin White and you talked about Vita Vea. What about the secondary? What what do you think we need to see from the secondary? Maybe, maybe David, we start with you. I mean, building on what we saw in the last game against the Vikings, and probably where our bucks have been for the last three or four seasons, communication in the backfield mm, mm. Um, is, you know, sooner or later, we've got to sort of get this act together and uh, start picking up receivers because it is just quite frustrating at times. Um, but, you know, we, we, a lot of change there. I mean, Ringfield seems to have got a new role again, seems to be very more aggressive and getting up the field. Um, so we got young spot. I mean, obviously we've got Calvin, um, Colton Davis, who had a great game this Sunday against the Vikings. Um, need to get him involved and receivers, but just general communication is what we need to do. We can't allow receivers to cut loose downfield and not picked up. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah. as you say, Cotton Davis seems to be in the Revis sort of, Revis Island type mould of wherever the best receiver goes, you follow with them. And they say Winfield was very low down in the box, you know, playing that strong safety. Reminded me, uh, showing my back to sort of Dan Crossman sort of era, uh, you know, whereas like, you know, even John Lynch used to sort of play a little bit further back and when he was in that sort of role, but it was, yeah, really, really aggressive. Um, Mariana, so you appear to have gone dark. <laughs> yeah, my, my light's gone out. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, we'll carry on. It's okay, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so from the secondary kind of what about the, the the sort of the younger or less experienced players? We talked about Christian Isian, you know, in brackets, who the heck is he? And kind of, yeah, do we need, do we, is it the depth that we're looking for again? Yeah, I think uh, McCollum uh, in his sort of second year, he needs to step up a bit more. Mm. Um, you know, we, we're still, I, I still feel like he's got a lot of talent, but he's not always, he was always going to be a sort of project pick. Um, and and he's he's only in his second year, I think, still. So mm -hmm. it it takes time. But really, we've got Carlton Davis that we're relying on, sort of Carlton Davis, as you say, Antoine Winfield, and we've got then a bunch of rookie pieces. And it is it is just that secondary is is the risk, and definitely that situation of having this sort of twenty sort of ten, fifteen, twenty yard pass down the middle where no one seems to be anywhere near a receiver just scares the life out of me. But we're against a different set of receivers. The Vikings had Jefferson and maybe we were seeing Jefferson's skill rather than the, the sort of lack of ability on the, uh, on the part of the, the Buccaneers secondary. Um, it'll be interesting. That's starts, a really good starts point. To tell. And, and there's this kind of this sort of like comb interlocking thing where the best receiver takes the best, you know, and, and then the second takes the second and the third takes the third. If that first receiver isn't there, everyone else moves up a rung. So, you know, I think that, 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 so that it's not just about taking one player out, but actually it can have a, co a cumulative effect across the whole secondary. And, you know, in the NFL, the, the, the gap, the difference between 20 yard seam give ups versus shut down defense isn't as big as you might think. Um, so, yeah, it's, that'd be really interesting. Let's move to the other side of the ball then. So, as we said, both teams scored 20 points last week. Do you, do you feel like the Bucs need to put... Will 20 be enough to, to win this game? I think we'll probably get more than that. I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I'm expecting us to develop. I mean, the one thing that always struggles with the Bears is they always seem to be in real rebuild mode and you <laughs> never know quite where they are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had a, a ton of draft picks this year didn't they and you know it, those sort of things take time to get together um and i really think that we're going to be sort of up there on offense and i think that's where we can really make the difference i guess the things are taking time though traditionally early in the season defenses seem to be slightly more ahead of the curve 
than offences. It takes a little bit longer to gel. Um, Mariana, we talked last time about the O-line. Um, if, if they're going to be running the ball more, then the O-line's going to have to gel more, isn't it? And what, what, what do you want to see from the run game? Um, I want to see more than two yards per carry. <laughs> that would be yeah. nice. I just, I, really, I think we just, we want to see a breakout run, really, from mm. someone. Mm. You know, a, a real nice sort of 10, 15 yard, real first down sort of carry just straight off the, you know, straight out, out of a play. Um, I think, I, I get the feeling, even this early, that we're going to see more of Tucker. Okay. Um, I, I do get the feeling that, that we may well see a bit more of Tucker. That's my tip for fantasy people. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and it, you know, that, that may well work for us because he's a bit of an unknown to other teams. People know what Rashad White offers and maybe they don't know what, what Tucker offers. So I, I, let, let's see if Tucker gets a few more carries this week. We might even see a bit more of Chase Edmonds or someone like that. Tucker feels just, a bit more like a sort of slow, more, sorry, not slow, a smaller, sort of more nimble sort of character, doesn't he? Yeah. So it could be that sort of change of pace, change of look. Yeah. I mean, be, I... <clears throat> sorry. It'd be, it'd be nice to see maybe um, some, some sort of mix up plays as well. Um, we're, we're only starting, we're, we're sort of early in the season and we're not going to see all the, all the sort of trick plays and stuff, but it'd be nice to see some misdirection in the backfield and, you know, maybe change of directions or stuff like that. So, you know, a couple of crossover sort of sweeps or something like that. Yeah, good call. Good call. David? I mean, picking up on the O-line again, we just don't seem to create enough seams for mm. runners to get in. I mean, that's a Tucker, a bit smaller, can probably utilise what they do create a bit more than white. But, you know, we do team to struggle to create runs up the middle and anything we do make is really on the edges. Um, so I'd like to see a bit more from the O-line actually creating something for our run game. Yeah, it's bizarre, but you're, you're absolutely right because kind of the off-tackle type stuff works. But ironically, as soon as we try and run a sweep or something outside, we <laughs> seem to not have the pace to do that either. So you're right, there's, that, there's obviously that. Yeah, maybe it just speaks volumes about, you know, the value of Worths um, and, dare I say, Gadeke. But I, I don't know, but kind of the people that are able to sort of seal the ends or the work by the tight ends. Maybe let's talk a little bit more about the tight ends. Obviously, with this time, we want them to actually grab the ball. Um, Mariana, last time you were saying, you know, there's a bit of a toss-up between KDOT and Anko Keefe. Do you think we can expect things against a slightly slower Bears defence? Well, again, maybe maybe this is where we play Keefe more like we played him last mm. season. Let's put him in front of, of the running back. And, you know, if we are struggling on that O-line to make the gaps, to make the seams to the runners, let's, let's use Keefe how we used him before and, and have him run ahead of, of our running back. Um, I still think KDOT is the better the better player to, to be catching, to, to be... I don't like seeing, you know, half a dozen balls going to Co Keith, who just was never a catching tight end out of, out of college, even. That's just well, me. <laughs> and, and a bit like your sort of fancy tip for, for Sean Tucker, I'm really interested to see what Payne Durham at, at tight end can offer. It's probably still a little bit early in the season, and because he's got Otten and Keith ahead of him in the depth chart, although it doesn't seem to be one or the other, it does seem to be sort of multiple tight end sets and things that, that are in the in the playbook. But I, I think, yeah, Durham at some point, I'm looking for him to, to break out. I don't think it's going to be this game, though. That would be lovely to see, I think, like Otten one side, Durham the other. Yeah. And, and who, because they are both, and, and Durham, what I like about him is is he can block and he can he can catch, mm. and he seems to take players with him. Seen some of his college video, and he just takes players with him. He drags them down. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see him when he does start. That that'll be good. And then we're kind of it feels like we've saved the best till last. Uh, the receivers, um, you know, it's probably fair to say you know a slightly muted game by by Godwin and Evans, but maybe. Yeah, with, with Tompkins and, and to some extent Palmer, we, we they probably made up for it. Kind of what sort of formation? We start with you, David. What kind of do you think we ought to get all four out there, or is it going to be a bit more of a tight game? How are we going to get Evans and Godwin more productive? Yeah, I mean, I think they played a few sets with Evans on his own, and mm. three or four stacked up the other side, didn't they? So they were trying to create something to him. Um, but I think definitely we need to see a bit of the pace downfield, particularly Tompkins and Palmer. Um, and try and stretch our, our offense and stretch their defense and get behind them. 
I think that's key because I think that'll open it up then for Godwin and Evans. So, so the old Scotty Miller tactic <laughs> of uh, yeah, bomb it long to scare the bejesus <laughs> out of everyone. Yeah, and I mean the right Mike Evans, he needs to catch the ball. <laughs> yeah, two or three as well. Very unlike Evans, didn't they? Which is really disappointing. They weren't clean catches. They were definitely sort of contested. Yeah, I think there was. Well, yeah. like you said, there was a the deep one. There was that sort of seam, sort of, uh, sort of like in where sort of the, the players' hands clashed or something. But you're right; those are the ones that we would expect Evans to come away with. And uh, and as we know, contract year for Mike Evans. So um, you know, Mariana, would you agree with David, or do you think we need to scheme slightly differently? No, I, I think. Um... I think you're very much correct. I think um, one thing I'd like to see again a bit more of is a bit more of Godwin coming out of the backfield because he does that that sort of stuff in in previous years. He's done that and, and effectively as well. He's a he's a fast player. Um, I feel like from what I saw, and it's so early to to be making. You know, <laughs> here's my prediction based on one game. One game exactly. Yeah. It's a small sample size. Um, but it did feel like Mayfield had more of that that little rapport with Godwin actually and some of the the balls that he threw to Godwin were in tighter windows um Evans he was kind of going to with the deep ball so um it'll be interesting to see if that's that is a a sort of continued theme and if he is going to to sort of Godwin more on sort of the 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 crossing routes and the, the sort of tight in the middle sort of um throws and and Evans is more of just our, our deep threat it's really, it does um, sort of hark back to sort of the Bucks offense. I get a bit, a bit through the Winston years in a sort of we're just going to throw the ball up and expect our players to go and make a play, which even at the time we spent ages, you know, bemoaning Sean Payton and the Saints and how they would scheme players open. So although, I, you know, I really welcome this new aggressive style of offense that we've got about going for it being risk takers, not necessarily just taking sort of small chip plays, but going for more chunky sort of stuff. But at the same time, I still, you know, again, sample size of one. We haven't seen the whole playbook yet, but it does feel like I'm not quite seeing, you know, high-low combinations or, you know, rub players crossing over or anything that's going to try and scheme players open. So that would probably be on my wish list. Um, David, kind of what, yeah. so just let, let's move on to wish lists more generally then, um, because we know for special teams, we want to kick things and, and tackle things. So that's probably taken as red. Um, kind of, you know, what, what's your, your magic one sort of uh, overall uh, requirement for the game? I think just finishing off on the receivers, I think if you think in the last few years, we've had a string of named receivers in our court. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we've had probably six, seven, eight there of named players and a huge amount of depth I think at the minute every team's going to be doubling up on Winston and Godwin yep. and so you know you've got Trey Palmer just coming Tomkins you know they're the people that are going to be covered less at the minute and so we could utilise them more well, if you're doubling both Evans and Godwin then I guarantee someone else is going to be exactly. open you've yeah. just got to get make a Mayfield to see them like on Madden you just need that little arrow over their head or something <laughs> But in overall, in terms of your, your sort of magic wand, the wish this, the thing we need to fix this week or the, the key to the game? I think it's just keep building and, you know, Baker carries on for me by second half. You know, yeah. he, he built on, he was slow in the first half of the Vikings game, but didn't do anything stupid. Second half, he was starting to make those connections. And I think it's literally just keep building that. Nice. Mariana, your wish list key to the game? Uh, I'm I'm very much with David. I think let let's build on it. I think um, my my wish list, my sort of magic wand, will just be like keep things the same. Let's have Baker come out and have a very steady game again. Um, I, I don't need him to do anything amazing. I just need him to play and not not get turnovers, and that's what he did. He he seems like he's he's up for it. He his shoulder seems fine. You know, there's always the worry that. Was he still slightly injured from before? His shoulder seems fine. He's throwing nicely. Let let's just let him build and, okay. and not throw interceptions. Yeah. So like like you said, sort of extending the play. If there's nothing there, throw it away. If you're running, I mean, there was some craziness of hitting for the sticks last time where it was sort of third and two or something. But other than that, he was sensible and stepped out of bounds early. Just keep keep it that keep it playing the long game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's that's. I don't need to see anything flashy from Baker. He's playing. He played this week the way I, you know, I feel like 
if he plays the rest of the season like that, um, he could play out the rest of the season like that. Yeah, um, well, that would be good, actually. That would be good to see. So, money where your mouth is, time. We're going to end with the score predictions. Um, it sounds like we're thinking the Bucks can do this. Um, this was going into the game. This was one of the games we felt more, you know, more confident about. I mean, we can only dare but dream to a 2-0 and start. The NFL is a funny old place, you know. Right now, there are 16 teams that are booking tickets for the Super Bowl and 16 tickets that are planning their number one overall draft pick. Um, so, you know, we are where we are. Um, but if we could get to 2-0, and then, then good things will happen. David, your kind of overall take and, and score prediction? Yeah, I think big home game. I think keep up the good tempo from the first game and we walk away with a 34-18 win. Oh, I like that. That's good. <laughs> Mariana? Um, yeah. Uh, mindset is is much the same. I, I think we, we've seen that the Bears um, can lose to what, what I don't think was a, a classic Green Bay team. Um, you know, Jordan Love starting really his, his first proper NFL start. So I, I think we've got much more experience and, and a better overall team. So I'm going to go with a 28 to uh, seven victory for the Bucks. That would be really good to shut down uh, on the day. That would be nice to see. Um, I'm probably more the closer of David's end of the spectrum. I'm not known for my creativity. The fact they lost to the, the Green Bay Packers last week, 38-20, I'm going to keep that going. That feels like the kind of score to me. Um, I would, you know, 38 points in the modern NFL is a very respectable output from the offense. I think we will get the run game going. I think we'll get the receivers going. And I think Baker, as you said, will carry on with that trajectory that's hopefully, you know, nothing but positivity. And I do think we'll struggle to stop them. I think, you know, that, that I think they'll have seen that passes down the seam. Um, and, and you know, Justin Fields sort of maybe sort of option running and then, you know, just dipping the ball over the line or something. Could be quite, they ran through some screen plays um, <laughs> that were annoyingly effective. Dare I say it, the Bucks are not the best team against the screen. Um, so those sorts of things, I think there could be some frustrating times ahead, but I think we'll come out on top. So 38-20 for me. You've heard what we think it is, but obviously we want to hear your opinion as well. So please make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, click the bell, but also comment below. Tell us what you think uh, the score is going to be um, and see if you know better than us, because we are obviously all experts. Um, so we can't all be right uh, all of the time. So uh, let us know what you think. But uh, David, Marianne, thank you both very much. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time. Go Bucks! Go Bucks! Go Bucks. Hello everyone, welcome back to Bucks UK TV. It's episode 97 of our new two week, two, uh, start again. <laughs>